Association for Great Egg Laying. Uh, when you want birds to lay a lot of eggs, you have to consider the following factors. One, the breed itself. In the first place, like I explained before, I told you that uh, the base layer is an again. Called by Issa Brown. Then you go to Bovanese. There is another one called De Delicab White. Delicab White. It is a white one. Uh, like you've been seeing the brownish one or the reddish one. This one is typically white. Delicab White. It is a new one on the market. You base on which one produces more eggs. A breed is, a bro is, is breeded for a certain purpose. So when you find that Novogen is the, the best in laying, consider the breed being the first point. So you source the breed that is best in that trait. Then secondly, uh, for the way that breed is meant to be handled in terms of daily or routine management activities on the farm. When they tell you you have to deworm it at, at, a, at a stipulated time lag, like monthly, monthly. The other side we only talked about brooded, but when you know that you are going to raise birds more than one month, make sure you deworm on a monthly basis. Make sure you supplement them with vitamins after every 20 days, give them 10 days vitamins. I mean, in every one month, give at least 10 days vitamins. Those birds will grow healthy, sit strong, and will lay a lot of, a lot of eggs. Then the warming should be done on a monthly basis. Besides uh, the routines, the feeding should be folded as, as per the manufacturer's prescription, the manufacturer of the feeds. Then... The feeding of the birds should be followed as per the breeder's prescription. Follow what the breeder told you to feed his birds and follow what the manufacturer told you to feed or to mix the feeds. Feeding is vital, management is vital, breed is vital, and lastly, biosecurity. You should keep tidy, you should keep the farm clean and disease free so that those birds don't exhibit diseases every now and then. The more the bird suffers any disease, the more it reduces on how it does what it lays. A case in point is sicocosidiosis. This one reduces on the laying percentage and sometimes it can even deprive the affected bird from the it can deprive it of uh, laying the eggs colibacillosis especially the ascending colibacillosis can also reduce on eggs production and even seeing those small eggs that we normally see those tiny eggs our grants use it to tell us that they are produced or laid by males which is not the case that is ascending colibacillosis then Besides biosecurity, management, feeding, and breed, you, yourself, as the owner of the stock, you should be, you should have love for your birds. Work on time, do it on time, whatever you do, do it on time. Okay, in summary, have passion for poultry. That is another drive that can lead to birds to live very well or great laying. It depends on what that person is raising up. If it is broilers, the way they make money in broilers is keeping consistent. Having those birds in saturation. When you have the one that you are about to be to be sold have others that are about to reach maturity and have others that are just in the brooder. So that by the time this, these ones get finished, 
another stalker is replacing this. With the broilers, they learn, I mean they earn, few monies there. For to run the business, it is lucrative, but you have to target where money is. And I will tell you where it is. Only that I, I, I will just follow this protocol first. How do these people earn? They earn by keeping consistent and having different batches of birds at the different stages. Hence, keeping in business even when they are earning few monies. Those people earn between 1,000 and 2,000 shillings per bird in that one and a half month. But if you keep consistent, you earn some good money. For the case of layers, the way they earn money is of course through eggs. If you have birds that lay, lay very well and they give you to the maximum, a normal bird of a good breed can lay up to 93 percent. That's when you have a big flock. If it is a smaller one, even 96, that is the highest percentage you can achieve. And if you have your birds laying very well, those, with those birds you earn 30 percent of what you put in, especially from the time they start real laying. 70 will return to, will return to the birds and 30 will be your profits. That's how they earn. For the case of duro purpose, like the word suggests duro, they earn in both meat and eggs. If you are selling meat, you will allow them to grow very fast for the first two and a half months to three months. Then you, sold, you sell off, whether to those brokers or middlemen or directly to the final consumer. And you earn your monies. They mostly eat in those three, uh, three and four months between 5,000 and 10,000 per bird, depending on the breed and how they grew. Then, being duro, if we allow it lay, those people to earn in, in terms of eggs, they run in more than one, one, one time or one way. They can, those eggs can be sold as, a, as a table eggs, the one with for eating, they can be sold as yellow yolked eggs, mostly bought by Indians. Uh, those white men, the Chinese, and the other rich guys that, that, that normally buy their eggs in the supermarket as yellow yolked eggs. And lastly, they earn money in terms of fertilized eggs. For the case of those who who do just buy the eggs and take the hatcheries for hatching, those selling generation two and above are being sold to those eggs and they produce chicks and they earn money as well. Others can go an extra mile of brooding and sell brooded chicks. That's how we earn money in the port.